Welcome, guys. This is my first official YouTube video post hip replacement. Um, and I'm gonna keep it short and sweet. I'm gonna take you through my most requested hip mobility sequence. This is like the OG of hip mobility sequences and the one sequence that when I used to take strength classes, this is why the guys used to actually come to my class because they knew they wouldn't do it by themselves, but it had so much of an impact on the quality of their movement during the session and then how they felt, especially how their lower back felt post-session, that they just kept coming back. I don't think they liked any other part of my class, <laughs> but that's what they came for. So that's the sequence I'm gonna share for you today. Now, very, very briefly, I'm gonna tell you why you're doing what you're doing and why it works. And if you don't wanna to listen to me babble on, you can fast forward to the good part of it, which is the sequence itself. So what you need to know is that your body works on a joint by joint approach, okay? So starting from your ankles and going all the way through to your head, your ankles are designed to move. They're designed to be mobile so that the knees can be stable, okay? So they can, the knees are supported. The hips are designed to be mobile so that the knees and the lower back, so the joint complex above and below, can be stable. The upper back is designed to be mobile so that the lower back and the neck can remain stable. Now, if any of those joint complexes don't do their job, they directly affect the joints above and below. So in the case of the lower back, if you are tight through your hips and or your upper back, your lower back is gonna compensate for the lack of movement there. Therefore, you're probably gonna end up with pain and you might even end up with an injury there, okay? so. This particular sequence attacks the hips from all angles. It adds in a little bit of rotation through the upper spine, which is why the lower back feels so good afterwards. All right, so we're gonna go straight into it now. Now, this is a dynamic warm up. This is the movement sequence that I do before any lower body training. So when we go into it, we're looking for smooth, fluid movement, and you're gonna hold each pose for like only three to five seconds. You wanna keep the body moving because we're preparing it for movement and we're priming the CNS. So the first part of this is gonna be a Spider-Man with rotation. So think about your alignment when you're doing this stuff because this is where it all starts. Like quality movement comes from being aware of where your body is in space. You're looking for the heel to be under the knee and you're looking for a straight line that comes from the second to third toe all the way up through that knee and all the way into the hip. Okay, push back. You're keeping this back leg nice and straight and you are gonna work through your own range of motion. So the first stretch for the hip flexor and the hamstrings here, you're gonna drop the elbow as far as you can to the ground and then we're gonna rotate up towards the ceiling. Again, you're working through your own range of motion. Then you're gonna turn this foot 90 degrees to the outside. Lock out this knee here and keep this foot flexed because that's gonna help support the knee and then you're gonna turn and get as close to the ground as you can. Here, you should feel the stretch through that top glute and also this bottom side. It's beautiful stretch. So you're getting that nice rotation through the pelvic girdle. Then we're gonna come into your Cossack squat, your lateral lunge, and I'm sorry about the angle here where your, my ass is in prime view. I'm trying to drive my knee out so it's aligned here. The most common movement fault here is the knee collapsing in, and you wanna keep this heel on the ground. The other foot, rotated up towards the ceiling to get that external rotation. You're stretching the adductor and the groin. And then you're just gonna come back through the middle and we're gonna go to the other side. Again, working through your own range of movements. You wanna be comfortably uncomfortable, dropping the elbow and then you're turning. You're getting that beautiful rotation through the ribs, through the upper spine. Turn the foot again, keep that foot flexed to support the knee and come as far down to the ground as you can. You're gonna notice like this is the side I had my hip replacement on. So my glute gets way tighter on that side. And this is something to be aware of when you're doing mobility drills. Um, because if you are tighter or weaker on one side, it is gonna translate into every other movement pattern that you perform with both legs. Like you are gonna compensate, you are gonna shift your weight and that's also where injuries happen. So dynamic warm-ups can be a game changer, not just because of how they make the body feel, 
but also because of what you pick up from moving, how your body feels from side to side. So you want to sort of start paying attention to that. Um, and quite often, if I find that I am much weaker or much tighter on one side, I'll work on a two to one or three to one ratio from weak to tight side. So I'll do more, either double or triple the amount of reps on that tight or weak side. For me, I notice it most through the glute of my left hip, but also through my right ankle when I come into my lateral lunge. I've broken my right ankle four times. <laughs> so if you're gonna do something, do it really well. And um, it really shows up in positions like this. So I find this position here quite tricky to keep my heel on the ground because I lack that mobility through the ankle joint here. And that makes it quite difficult for me when I squat. So definitely useful to pick up on that stuff when you're moving through these sequences. So we did six reps there. Normally I do like six to 10. Um, you want to be comfortably uncomfortable. You don't want to be in pain. So take it at your own level. You might not be able to get the range that I got today. I've had a bit of practice. I'm supposed to make this look easy. And um, anyone can do anything for Insta, but I have had a hip replacement. So there is hope for you yet. Now, hopefully you found value in this. If you did, please like it. Please ask me any questions below. Tag your mates, and if you want to see more videos, click the link to subscribe. See you next time.